So, I want one person, whatever way you use your hands or your arms, they must go together. So if I'm going left or going right, and you have to mirror the image of your partner, okay? So if you're going high, you're going low, but you have to have your palms out, okay? You have to have your palms out the whole time. Whatever you're doing, you have to mirror the movement of your partner. Let's go, come on. Revisit your childhood. Keep your feet planted. Okay, and stop. Can anyone show me how to do a shoulder roll? Come on, guys. What's a shoulder roll? Don't be shy. 36 coaches and no shoulder rolls and mushes. Come on, let's go. Yep, I'm the defender. Good man. Give him a football, Noel, one second or somebody. Okay, let's go again. We get you with the football, right? So when he has the football, let's come at me and protect the ball. Let's go. Come at me. Good. Well done. So he's just make, just glancing off me. Let's go again. Off the other side now this time. Okay, very good. So just to put this in perspective, I think I might have said this the last time I was here. We'd spend time in every training session doing things like, I'm coming to you, you're with me. Okay, we're going to come alongside we're me going. here. What's your name? Siobhan. Siobhan. So you're coming at me, right Siobhan, you ready? Come with me. Yeah. We're, going, we're going that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't go ahead of me. Yeah, yeah. All right, ready? Right Siobhan. You make some bit of an effort to tackle me, will you? <laughs> Okay, you ready Siobhan? Let's go again. Ready? Okay, so the skill of offloading the ball. Well, if you don't practice it, you'll end up doing what I did. All right, so the time when to throw a dummy, when to offload the ball, that's a skill. And we spend so little time doing it, okay? And why am I telling you this? Well, I don't know if any of you guys know Sinead Goldrick, but Goldie would have been one of the best footballers that ever played with us, right? And we would have spent training sessions like this. We're working on offloading the ball or dummying the ball and shoulder rolling. And in the National League game, coming into, we'd been practicing this and this happened in the game. So she comes up to the player, dummies, rolls and found herself here. She did two dummies and never beat the player. And in the dressing room at half time, people were laughing at her. And this is what she said. Do you think it's funny? And 14 years playing for Dublin, I was never shown how to do it doing. So if you don't show the kids how to do it, how are they going to get better? Okay, so if you haven't been shown how to do a, a shoulder roll or shown how, you may have an exceptional kid who goes out the back and does it because they've seen something on the telly, but 90% of the kids, unless we encourage it and show it, they won't do it. So we have to show them. Okay, so I want you quickly to get a ball one between two to start off. Let's go. So let's go quickly. So I want you to start off with your roll. So if you're doing your right shoulder, look, hold the ball in your left hand and roll away. If you're doing your right side, it's my left shoulder and roll away, okay? So protect, the ball is always on the outside. Go! Remember when you're rolling, the ball goes out, not in. So come at me, shoulder, yeah, and roll that way, that's it, come at me again, this shoulder, and you're going to roll that way, this shoulder, there you go, alright, okay, so I want you to start off one person with two footballs, just watch this, we'll do it in a second, right, so underhand right, underhand left, let's go, right, left, so now, you ready, underhand right, underhand left, Good man, strike. So when you're striking the football, what are you striking it with? You can do the hand passes all you want, guys, but if you get this part wrong, it'll be wrong for years. What are you striking it with? Your hand. What part of your hand? Huh? The palm of your hand, do you reckon? That's the palm of my hand. Did you hear? What sound was it? It was flat. Do you want to strike it with the palm of your hand? Maybe if you're seven and your fingers are weak, you'll have to. When you're 11, 12, 13, you start getting stronger, there's a spring in your fingers. So you want to use your fingers, okay? If you use your palm your hand, do you hear the sound? It's slow and the bottom line is most times it'll drop short, okay? Off you go. Let's go. 
So remember the spring in your fingers. Where your fingers make contact with your hand is probably your strongest part. Okay, good. Now take one football each. So now, I want you to get on the balls of your feet when you do this. So you're going to, you're allowed to use two hands now. You're going to hand pass with your right hand down the right channel. You're going to hand pass with your right hand down the right channel. So you have two hands. Strike them with your right, hold them with your left. Nick, Nick, sorry guys, just before we do that, can I... Sorry guys, I meant to say it upstairs. There's, there's, sorry Barry, one sec. We, we've got coaches here, I'm one of them, that's in the nursery, okay? So we've got Robin who's under seven, Sue and David are here, they're under seven girls, okay? And I'm thinking to myself, is this beyond them? Can't, like, is it beyond, is it beyond maybe Robin or, or Michelle to do that and that? That's, exa the hand pass. That's exactly what they should be doing. So we we're going to come to that anyway, to the adaptation of this for kids who even, it doesn't have to be seven or eight, you could go to 13 and these kids won't be able to do this. So we have to adapt. So we find a way for them as well. Okay, but we're going to show you the bar and then we're going to, sorry, that's uh, Noilies. We're, we're going to show you the bar and then we're going to come down. Okay, so off you go, right hand. Sorry. Good stuff, well done. Okay, throw with your right, go. Catch with two, throw with right. Now throw with your left. Okay, stop. Now I want one person to throw overhead and the other to throw underarm. Go. Change your role. If you're overarm, you're now underarm. And vice versa. Okay, and stop. Now, go back to hand passing the ball with your left hand. So you have two balls at the same time. Left hand working this time. Go. If you're not comfortable, then just throw with your left hand. Get yourselves into fours and make a square. Come on, quick as you can. Make a square. Okay. So in that square, you've got four footballs. Two people at opposites hold the footballs. The other two just put them down by their side. Okay. So we start with this group. Okay. So I want you to hand, now you've been using two hands for a reason. So I now want you to hand pass the ball clockwise in that group. Off you go, everyone. Clockwise, your clock goes empty. Clockwise. Okay, and stop. Just jog it down here to me, guys. Quick. We'll use the four lads. All right. Off you go. Come on, keep going. Everyone in around here, me? Yeah, everyone in. Just make a circle here. So, we're just doing a simple hand pass and exercise, which every single one of us does every single training session at some stage. But inside, we said the difference between coaching and training. Right? Every one of these will get the ball taken off them in a game. Why? Because they're using the incorrect hand. They're not protecting the football. They should be using their outside hand. All right? But we'll see that hundreds of times and we won't pull it. There's the difference between you being a coach and not. So they're the little things we have to change. Okay? If we don't encourage them to use their outside hand in the game, they are not, or in the training, they are not going to use it in a the game. Therefore, they're going to get into trouble. Okay? So watch the difference now. Come on. So off you go, outside hand, outside hand. See, see the difference now? I now am struggling to get to the ball, all right? Well, the previous one was so easy for me to try and intercept, okay? Small things and inside, the key moments of the game are decided by executing the simple things really well. Let's do them well, okay? Off you go, outside hand. Okay. 
Change direction. Outside hand. Pick up a third football. Okay, and stop. Come on in. You four stay where you are. All right. Ball each. Let's go. So, now I'll ask the question here about, you know, the seven-year-olds or the eight-year-olds and whatever else. So, I could be a kid whereby, let's go, we've got one football and you're just throwing it to me. And I'm doing that with two hands and that is my max at this point in time. Or I may be able to throw up my right hand and I'm struggling to throw up my left hand, okay? So, one football may be the answer for me. I guarantee in your seven-year-olds or your eight-year-olds, there's at least four kids, if not six, who are way ahead of that. And you have to try and accommodate them. And just as a matter of interest in this, guys, this is a fact in sport. You're doing a disservice to the kids who are extremely talented to keep them at the level that somebody who is not as talented at that stage, you are doing them a disservice, all right? It is not fair to leave the top kids on the same stuff no more than it's not fair to ask the kids who aren't as strong to do stuff that the other kids are doing. It, one is the same as the other. You cannot say, well, I can't challenge the top kids, but I have to find the bar for the kids who are at this level. You have to find both. That's your challenge, all right? And oftentimes we go, oh, they're, they're not doing enough for the weaker kids. Sometimes we're not doing enough for the stronger kids, okay? So you have to see it both ways. You have to challenge them both. So whether it's one ball, or two balls, or me telling you you're going to solo with your toy as opposed to your foot, find a way, okay? But the thing been, if the kid is achieving with the one football, brilliant. Look at the way they're holding the hands. They're doing a cup catch. Or now, we've thrown a high, look at the high catch. Do you see the high catch? Everyone down here, Siobhan's after, Barry's after doing a high catch, all right? So, but the ball, and now all of a sudden we're coaching. What did he do? See the way Barry caught the ball? and his fingers out wide and his thumbs behind the ball. We didn't give a lecture on thumbs or cup. Or, why? Because we've let them off doing their own, okay? And then equally, the other kids, let's go now. So what you're going to do is this. You're going to throw the ball in the air to yourself, high as you can, when I tell you to. And you're going to hand pass the ball to him when the ball is in the air. You're going to hand pass his ball back to him and catch your own. Ready? Go, let's go. Brilliant. That's not bad. Let's go again, what's? Okay, that's super, now change, you're throwing, you're hand passing. Ready, go. Do you see the way he stalled it? Do you see the way he stalled I saw that, don't worry. Okay, so, sometimes they sell you out. I've seen that before. Let's go. Good, okay, have a go with your partner, go. <laughs> So, as you started to do that, whether you were achieving or otherwise, what started to happen? What happened? The volume went up. Why? Because you started to have a bit of crack. All right. Now, just in it, so it is a bit of fun, but there's a skill set in it. Okay. What are you working on in that exercise? Hand eye coordination. Da, 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 da. You're working on a hand pass. All right. That's all you're doing. You're working on the hand pass. Everything else is a distraction. Everything else is a distraction. High ball in the air, bang. Nothing. Hand pass. You're going for a ball in the match or passing a hand. Key moment of the game to give a good hand pass. Someone's coming in to about to tackle you. If you get distracted by someone coming in and forget about getting the hand pass right, the moment is gone. Okay? So that's all you're doing. You're practicing for that moment. Does that, does that make sense? All right? So all this stuff, I can tell you this after years and years and years and years and years, and years sports on whatever else, simple things repeated. So throw distractions in for it, whether it's noise or movement around it or whatever else, right? It helps. So here you guys are going to go at this. You're going to throw the ball to yourself, catch it at its highest point. See, listen to the terminology and I'll repeat these inside. So highest point, throw the ball to yourself. Up you go. Highest point catch. Brilliant. How Hand pass to your partner. Highest point catch. Hand pass with your other hand. Let's go again. Highest point catch. 
Brilliant. Hand pass. Highest point catch. Other hand. He went right again. Change. Keep going right and left. Okay. Off you go with your partner. Go. Practice. Go. Highest point catch. Strike right. Highest point catch. Strike left. Well done. Okay. Now, see when you're coaching and you don't want to spend too much time on this because you want kids to keep going. Okay. The one little thing I'd alter with these is they're not protecting the ball. They're going for the ball wherever it is, right? They're going for it, right? But they're not protecting it. So if that ball comes at them and they have their hands here, if they don't judge it perfectly, the ball could go through the hands, okay? So put your thumbs behind the ball to try and stop it going through. Go again. Let's go. See if we can make an improvement on it, all right? Good. Off you go. Well done. Good woman. Excellent. Okay, well, there you go. Sometimes it doesn't work even that way. But, uh, that's, but you're getting my point. So our small little coaching point. What are we trying to do? Spread our fingers and get our thumbs behind it. Don't get too caught up in it. It's a coaching point, right? And you're going to say that coaching point a million times before your coaching career is over. It's the same time with striking the ball. Where should your head be, up or down? And you're going to get your players to repeat those things. Where should your thumbs be? Behind the ball. Where should your head be? Up or down, you're kicking the ball. ball your head is going to be down. You're going to get them to repeat those things all of the time. And it is going to take you thousands of times before they actually get it. Okay? So that, don't get frustrated with that bit. Okay? You, you hear the coaches, I've told them a hundred times. But you've only started lads. You've been under 900 times to tell them before they start getting it. So keep going with it. Okay? Now, next one. We, imagine we're after spending that and we haven't kicked the football yet, okay? And I would tell you, the mo for me, in our game, the most important skill is kicking. Because, come on in a little bit closer, and just uh, on this one, in 2010, with the under-21s, when the journey, the journey of that great group all started, we identified Kerry as being the, most, mo the best kicking side in the country, okay? And that was the goal. To become as good if not better than them kicking the football what happens when you're good kickers the ball Kick space. huh create more space yep you move the ball quicker you create more space but what skill do you improve by kicking the ball catching, catching. if you have to if you have a good kicking team you have a good catching team end up what are the two most important skills in gaelic football kicking and catching all right that's a simple lot okay so if you practice kicking you definitely are going to improve the other one and just on that what's the national head of hurling uh, martin fogarty, martin fogarty. Uh, i presented in crow park a number of years ago and just before the presentation he says to me very good he says you're going up to talk about the skills of gaelic football are you and i said i'm going to give it a go and he says well you know what they are catching kicking pulling and dragging <laughs> and, he, and he walked away, right? But I would take great hope that the skills of Gaelic football have really, really improved. We're seeing a much higher standard of kicking and catching dummies and whatever else. And we've started to get away from the blanket stuff, the stuff that I thought was going to destroy it. And it started to come into the girls game again. And again, teams are beginning to see the light that this isn't. And just a matter of interest in this, just so as you do know, this is a fact. 13 senior footballers in Tyrone opted out of the panel this year. Do you know why? Because they hated the way they were playing. So does it matter how you play? It bloody well does, all right? So the bottom line is this, if your kids aren't enjoying it, they won't keep coming. Even if they're winning, even if they're on the cusp of winning, it'll hold them for a period, right? They have to enjoy what they're doing, okay? So we're going to start kicking. Now, this is what I want you to do. We're not going to talk about what part of your boot you kick. I want you to kick the ball to a partner. One ball to one partner. Off you go. Have a go. Strike it whatever way you want. Whatever distance you want. Just try not to hit anyone else. Let's go. Kick it. So now when you kick it, use two feet. Doesn't make a difference how good or bad it feels. Use both of them. Not at the same time. Not at the same time, no. What part... Of your foot, are you trying to kick the ball with? This part. Your which? The laces. Your laces. Okay, so there's three different kicks, okay? Kick one. Let's go. That's your laces, okay? So when I drop the ball in, you'll have kids who do this. Do you know those ones? They throw it out and they try to skip. Okay, so you're trying to let the ball fall. Just let it fall, okay? 
you're letting kicking the ball would have fallen out of your hand okay now that may take months sometimes seasons okay so what are you trying to letting the ball fall are you thrown out in front of you well if you do the impact of the strike is weakened the strongest point of contact is directly below your chin okay that's where the power makes co contact that's when you want to strike the ball okay so we have laces what other kick have we got your your instep okay okay let's go again right what other kick have we got outstep all right so what's my outstep what part of the what part of the foot am i kicking with so your instep is your laces to the inside of your boot your outstep is your laces to the outside of your boot when i kick the ball with my well done when i kick the ball with my laces what part of the ball am i kicking the center so when you kick the ball with your laces you're kicking the Center of the ball. When you kick it with your instep, what part of the ball are you kicking? The center. When you kick the ball with your outstep, what part of the ball are you kicking? The center. Always the center of the ball. Now you knew that, didn't you? Yeah, you did. Okay. And we know you did. That's why we didn't ask you to write it down. Okay. But forevermore, you're going to say the center of the middle of the ball, okay? Because if you know, and you tell your players, then your players know, and they won't try to do these ones, where they screw off right, trying to kick the outside of the ball. They don't kick the outside of the ball. They kick the center of the ball. They kick the outside of their boot. They kick the center of the boot, or they kick the instep of the boot. But it's always the center of the ball. Now, do you know when we talked about nuggets? That is a nugget, don't lose it. When you go back inside, we'll try and write these nuggets down. Always kick the center of the ball, have a go. Right, so laces, instep and outstep, have a go. All the things that happen. So I'm kicking the ball with my laces, all right? So watch, I'm kicking it with my laces, you've told me to kick with my laces, but what am I not doing with my foot? I'm not opening my foot, okay? So an open foot allows the ball to stay down. A closed foot allows the ball to go up. So that's fine once I know why I'm doing it, okay? So like in, in, when I'm during this training session, I'd get to a stage where open your boot, keep your head down. That's all I'm doing. That's I'm going around small little things, your shoulder, like when we're, when we're scoring, okay? When we start to goal here, okay? My shoulder's to goal. What way should I finish? I should finish with my chest on the... Look, just watch me, forget about the ball. Where has the ball gone? Where my chest dictated it to go, okay? Had I turned my body here, well, that's where it would gone. Now, the most important thing in that is not the outcome, but why the outcome took place. Because if I know why the outcome, I can change it. Does that make sense? All right. So quickly, what I want you to do is start with your partner. Okay, shoulder, 20 meters apart. Just turn, chest onto the partner. Off you go. Try it off right, then try it off left. Off you go. Good, good. Well done. You're going to coach your partner. You together? Yeah. You take the second football, give her the second ball. No. Okay, you take the second ball. Tell you what. Forget about that instruction. Okay. Do you know what a solo is? No. Okay, well, we, we'll learn. So, you're going to solo the ball by kicking the ball to yourself. That's called a solo. Whichever one you want. Okay. Brilliant. Go on, and you go, and now the other one. That's all right. There you go. There's shin, foot, everything. We need loads of that. Okay. So, there's solo right, solo left. Bounce right. Bounce. Okay. Solo left. That's all right, back to it again. Stay with me now. Bounce left, bounce left, there you go. Okay, so your sequence is going to be, who's together there? So you're going to do this at the same time. You ready? Solo right, solo left. No, 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 hold on a second now. Give him a, what did I say to you? Did I say kick it to him? Let's go. Off you, anywhere you want, don't stand still. Anywhere you want, okay, you're coaching him. Go, solo right. 
Solo left. You're doing this as well. Good. You're not. We're not stopping. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Solo right. Solo left. Bounce right. Solo left. Bounce left. Solo right. Okay. Now, just coming back to your seven, eight, nine-year-olds. Okay. There are kids in your six-year-olds, five-year-olds who will do this. There are kids who will be not able to do this for another four or five years, or even 10 years, okay? You have to find the way to do it. So the kids that can't, we go back to one ball, we're bounce right, solo left. The solo left could be their knee, coming back to that. Bounce. What we don't want them to do is practice things like a fell. There's no point in practicing this, because now we're practicing them to fell, okay? So if we have this or this, now we can do that. And now we can do this and that, but we don't want them bouncing and bouncing and bouncing because we're now fouling. In our game, that's a foul, okay? So, the fact that you're hitting it off your shin and your foot is brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> so you're gonna keep going at it, okay? So you're gonna coach him as he does it. Solo right, solo left. Bounce right, solo left. Bounce left, solo right. Hand pass right, hand pass left. Partner, off you go. Go! So off you go. Solo right, solo left. Bounce right, solo left. Bounce left, solo right. So the process again. Solo right, solo left. Bounce right, solo left. Bounce left, solo right. Either kick right or kick left or hand pass right and hand pass left to your partner. Now see if you can speed it up. Even if the skill goes down, see if you can speed it up. Go. Solo right, solo left. Bounce right, solo left. Bounce left, solo right. Kick right or hand pass right and kick left or hand pass left. Go. Go to different spaces. Don't stay in the same space. Our, our recognition as a coach is in getting that child up with the others. That's our, that's, that's our, the achievement. So for that situation whereby, as opposed to bending your knee, if I bend my knee, how do I get the ball to my boot? I can't, okay? So my leg is almost straight as I go to solo the ball and the foot comes back into myself. There's my solo, okay? There's lots of kids, nev that's never broken down, okay? And not, like even a solo, some kids don't know what a solo is, okay? What is a solo? You're kicking the ball to yourself. Okay, so a lot of kids will know keepy uppies. So it's a keepy uppie. Many moons ago, I studied in Strawberry Hill in Twickenham. Bobby Robson came in to give us a, a, an FA coaching course over a, a series of weeks. And one of the exercises he had us doing was walking around like this. I should say, so he was Havana. And he said to me, You're a really good soccer player. I never played soccer in my life. I would be brutal at soccer, right? Two left feet. But the point's been on it, right? That having the skills that have been able to curl the ball into yourself, okay? So for us, it was natural. If you're, if you're starting off with this, this can be the hardest thing ever for some children, okay? So we have to find the way. So rather than bringing the knee up, it's a straight leg bringing the foot to yourself. You see, most people, they're certainly from my era, didn't use both sides of their body, okay? Weren't encouraged to use both sides of their body. So when you talk about left foot as... I was out in Davis's a couple of years back and Mick Curran and Paul Curran, who you all remember Paul, Mick Curran was a seriously good footballer, but they used to say in Davis's that he got Noel, the father, hands, but he got Theresa's feet. They never said that about Paul, all right? So we have that thing about our children that we knock on and receive certain elements. Well, here you go, guys. It isn't that. It's us developing our skill sets, okay? So what do we want? We don't want to bring our knee. We want to bring our foot. So try and keep your leg straight as you solo to yourself. Off you go, solo right, solo left. You're gonna put this ball over the bar, okay? So, co off you go, put the ball over the bar. Okay, give him the next football. Come on, somebody, just give him the next ball. C tell him though. <laughs> okay, that's right foot, next ball. One, just call him. Left foot, left foot, turn, left foot. Okay, let's go, Get next ball guys, give him the next ball. Left foot again. Okay, next ball. Okay, so, coaching, when you go to strike the football, head up or down? Down. down. Looking at? The ball. the ball. Okay, when I go to kick the ball over the bar, it's a different kick. What part of my boot am I trying to strike with? My instep. Why? 
Because if you look, look, watch Niall, so there's my instep and there's my laces. Which part do you think is going to be more accurate? Okay, so there's no doubt. Okay, I head down. And I'm going to give him a little bit of, even though he doesn't need it, but for kids they do. He must land running. So when, give him the next ball. So give him the ball. So land running. So strike the ball over the bar, land running. Why would I tell him to land running? Because his momentum is going into the strike. Okay, left foot, Noel. Let's go. Head down. Land running. Okay, so why did the ball not go over the bar? Because his left shoulder went to here. If he wanted it to come over the bar, where would it have gone? To here. So his chest would have ended up. So when you're, so we'll give, just give six footballs. Just put six footballs here quickly, right? There we go. So Niall, each time you're finished, you go back and collect the football, okay? I'm gonna show you the score and challenge inside. So let's go, six in a row, head down. So when I'm coaching, it's all I'm doing here with 18 players, clean strike. So what happened? His head lifted just as he went to strike it. Clean strike. Good strike, well done. Chest on the target. So I'm giving them head down, land running, chest. That's all I'm using is th those coaching terms, right? So I'm not looking at great score. Come on, Noel, put the ball over the bar. That's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to work on the strike to get to make sure. So what are the things we're looking at? We're looking at where his head is. What is the finish? We're looking at where his chest is, right? If the ball goes drifts right or left, why? Well, the tendency is his shoulder didn't come around to bring the ball on the curl, okay? What part of the boot should he be kicking off? His instep, okay? His head up or down, head down, all right? And the little things that keep happening, players come up to have a look just before, when they go to have a look, they don't strike the ball clean, okay? Now that's coaching. You're standing here, not going, great score and oil, super stuff, Sean. Well, I don't know what's happening here. I have to see what's happening here. 